So let's continue on. More mean value theorem. Hell yeah. Actually, we didn't even do mean value theorem. Well, we, we did. You just didn't know you did. Uh, we did mean value theorem last time with one special case just where the derivative equals zero, but this time we're going to skip over rules theorem, which just has one application. Let's take it to the mean value theorem, which is the generalization of everything. So running through, let's go down to here, and I got a couple little graphs, and I want to kind of play some more games. Same sort of thing. Let's have some, uh, let's have it be continuous, but now we don't need this height to be the same. I still want it to be smooth and continuous. I want it to be smooth and continuous across there, but here's our new game. That's what we call the secant line right here, huh? Right there, that's the secant line. <clears throat> And that has a slope, correct? Whatever the slope is. I don't know what it is. Maybe the slope of the secant line or an end sub seek or something. All right? The slope of that secant line. Now, we want to try and draw this from these two points. Not the orange curve, but in blue, we'll draw this. And I don't want you to draw it and ever have the same slope as the secant line. But go from point A to point B in any which way you want. Now, we do this. Oh, I think we just broke it. Huh? So there's got to be some sort of spot right about right here where they have the same slope. Shit, let's try it again. Maybe we can do it better. Oh, let's maybe put A up here this time. We can put B, uh, let's put it down here. And now we have some, some secant line, right? We don't want to make it. So, oh, I know what we'll do. We'll just make curves. We'll do like, whoosh, whoosh. Yeah, shit. I made it worse. Now there's one, two, three all at the same damn slope so geez it seems like this thing is continuous and uh differentiable that we might have the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of the secant line now let's show where this could maybe break down just a tad uh, maybe we have some point a and we have some point b and maybe we'll do this we'll just put it from here to here well, like, oh here we go let's draw some sort of line we're like let's try and make sure we don't get the slope of the tangent line like i know how to do this Boom, and then this one's going to go down like this. And there we go. It doesn't equal the, the slope of the tangent line, never equals the slope of the secant line. But we have broken this one thing. Notice what this has, the other ones don't. It is not continuous. So we're going to need these things to be continuous and differentiable. So let's get down to our theorem. And it's the mean value theorem. There we have it. The mean value theorem. Once again, we have hypotheses that we must take into account, except this time we only have two. We don't need the heights to be the same. We don't need those heights to be the same. Because when they were the same, we already knew the slope of the secant line. The slope of the secant line was zero. Right back here. The slope of the secant line, when they're the same height, is zero. Why? With the mean, with the rules there, and we could just set it equal to zero because we already knew it because the heights were the same f of a equals f of b. But now, now we're like, we don't give a shit about that. We need our f to be continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval. Same thing, right? That was. That was, that was the same thing. We had one and two from our, from our rolls there, but now we just don't have f of a equals f of b because we don't give a shit. So we're going to say that there is some number c in between a and b such that the slope of the tangent line, or the derivative, equals the slope of the secant line. All right? Not this stupid one, but right up here. Boom. Matches. Match. Ooh, hey. How'd that happen? Yeah. Matches and matches. 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 Right? Matches, matches, slope of the tangent line equals the slope of the secant line. That's what we got going on here. So let's see something that kind of illustrates it. And we'll we'll play a little bit of a game. Let's do a problem out of a, out of a fun one. I don't know. Let's say, let's find, let's find all values of C. All C that satisfy. And I'm, well, the way we write this is MVT. We don't even need to write no mean value theorem or intermediate value theorem. Remember, intermediate value theorem was IVT. Now we got the satisfies MVT. And, and what that really is, is we say that the, the slope of the, uh, 
the tangent line of the derivative is just equal to the slope of the secant line. Do you remember me showing you this shit in class? That this is just a fancy way of writing in the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Don't be freaked out by that like it's something terrible. It's a freaking slope formula. You're good to go. I promise you. So we want to find this, and let's come up with some sort of function. You know I freaking love trig. Let's go get this, huh? So let's get our, our f of x is equal to sine inverse of x. And we're going to go from, let's go from negative 1 to 1. Huh? Now these are not at the same height. Sine inverse of negative 1 is negative pi over 2. Sine inverse of positive 1 is positive pi over 2. We are not at the same heights. We only have to fulfill two things. One, we need this to be continuous upon the interval from negative 1 to 1. It is just by knowledge of what's going on with an inverse function. So this is continuous on the closed interval from negative 1 to 1. Check. We also need to make sure that this is differentiable on the open interval from negative 1 to 1. Well, we know we can take a derivative on sine inverse. Especially plugging in values from its domain in there. Boom, we're good to go. We're differentiable. So let's go get this shit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a derivative. And then we're going to go find the slope of the secant line. Slope of the secant line. What the hell? Let's go get this thing. So let's start off first with finding its derivative. Say so f prime of x is equal to the derivative of sine inverse of x. 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Cool. Cool. Now we need to go find. Oh shit! What is that? We gotta go find. We gotta go find that f of b minus f of a, all over b minus a, and then we're gonna set that thing equal right here. Bang! We gotta go find some values of x. We're gonna call it c at the end. So f of b. Well, our f is sine. So I think this is sine inverse of something minus sine inverse, all over our b minus a. So. Our A is right here, our B is there, so it's B is 1, put the 1 underneath. That's a minus 1, and then we have minus, minus 1. Okay, cool, 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 cool. We're going to set those two things equal right here. They're going to go equal, equal, we're going to solve. So this is just going to become a number on the right-hand side. So sine inverse of pi over 2, or sine inverse of 1 is equal to pi over 2, minus Sine inverse of negative 1 is negative pi over 2. Can you imagine trying to do this problem you don't know any of these values? It'd be kind of weird, huh? And now we have 1 minus negative 1. That's going to become positive 2. So what do we have here? We have half a pi, and that's a plus half a pi. That's a full pi over, oh, pi over 2. So here we have it. We just drop down and go, hey, we found this is the slope right here. This, this thing, this is the slope of the secant line. Now we just got to set that thing equal to the slope of the hey, right here, the derivative. And let's go find this value. So we have 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Let's go solve for x. Now, of course, this isn't going to turn out super clean or anything, but what have you, we'll be fine. Uh, so what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Um, oh, let's cross multiply. We're going to get the 2 is equal to pi times the square root of 1 minus x squared. Let's divide that out. We get 2 over pi is equal square root of 1 minus x squared. Let's square both sides. We're going to get 4 over pi squared is equal to 1 minus x squared. Let's subtract 1 on over to the other side, and then we have a negative x squared. Oh shit, why don't we hit it and change its sign on both sides and set that equal to the positive. Now let's hit that shit with a square root and say x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 4 over pi squared. Don't simplify that shit down. Let's check it out and see what it is in the calculator, huh? Wow. One minus, minus 4 divided by pi squared, huh? Now we're putting that thing inside there. We hit that thing to the 1 half power and we find out, oh shit, this thing's approximately, this thing's approximately plus or minus 0.77. So we know that this is, now the whole point why we needed to check that is we just needed to make sure that this number was inside our interval, right? That's that big piece we need to know, and ta-da, it is. Therefore, we can answer our question and say this c is actually equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 
4 over pi squared. And there's are those, there are the C values, such that the mean value theorems, hypothesis, and conclusion are satisfied. Yeah, buddy, can you read any of that shit? Well, we'll be back to our next problem quite soon. Right over here. Theorems and corollaries. More shit to do. Fun.